In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a reusable database class using PDO and PHP. Now, when I say reusable, I mean this class will handle all the basic database operations like inserting, updating, deleting, and selecting data from any table you want. We'll be using prepared statements in this class. You learn how to bind placeholders to values, execute queries, and even log any connection or SQL errors to a log file. This makes your database more secure and easier to maintain. Another great thing about this class is that it has no dependencies except for the errors, errors that log file. That means you can simply move the class and the log file from one project to another without any hassle. If you are new to PDO, it stands for PHP Data Objects. PDO is a lightweight, consistent way to work with databases in PHP. Alright, that's enough of an introduction. Let's jump right into the code and get started. I've got a few files ready in my project folder. First, there is a db.class.php file which will host the database class. Then there is a script.php file. In this file, I will run tests on the database class. And finally, an errors.log file which will be used to log any SQL errors. Alright, with that out of the way, let's start writing the database class. The database class will be an abstract class. This means we can call its properties and methods without needing to create an object of the class. Let's begin with the class properties. First, I'll add a private static username property. This will hold the MySQL username needed to connect to the database. The visibility is set to private because no other class should access these database connection details. I've also made it static since all the methods in this class will, will also be static. Next, let's define the MySQL password with another private static property. After that, we'll create a private static DSN property. This property will store the connection string that the PDO object needs to connect to the MySQL server. The string starts with a database type, which in our case is MySQL. Next, we specify the host, which, which is localhost, and the database name, which is test. Finally, we set the character set to UTF-8 to handle encoding properly. We'll also create one more property named affected rows. This property will store the number of rows affected by a query. The visibility for this property is set to public, so it can be accessed outside the class when needed. And that's all the properties we need for this class. Now let's move on to writing the class methods. The first method is named connect and will establish the database connection. The scope here is set to public so I can call the method outside the class and the type is set to static. Inside the function I will use a try block and create a new PDO object. The first argument is the connection string. The self keyword and double colon is used to access static properties and methods. The second argument is the username and the third argument is the password. Next, I will use the PDO object and call the setAttribute method to set PDO to throw errors as exceptions. Next, I will use a catch block and pass in the PDO exception object and a variable named E. The E variable will give me access to the error message that may occur. But first, I will use the error log PHP function to write the error in a log file. So, I will pass in the date function to have a timestamp on when the error occurred. Then I will append a custom message that says database connection error. And last, I will append the actual error that the PDO exception object returns. This whole thing is the first argument. The second argument will be the number 3. This number tells the function to write the error in the file that we specify in the third argument, which is the errors.log file. Next, we will throw an exception on the screen saying that the database connection failed. And last, the method will return the connection object. Let's fix also the typo that I made on the setAttribute method. Now I'm going to run a test to see if our class is working so far. But let's first echo a success message so we have a validation that the method works. Ok, now we'll go to the script.php file and I will require the database class. Next I will use the class name and double colon to access and run the connect method. Now we'll run the script.php file in the browser. And there is the success message. Nice, our connection code is working. Now let's go back to the database class and let's trigger an error. I will change the username to an incorrect value. Let's run the code again. As expected, we see that there is an error. Now let's check the log file. We should see the error message in there. And there it is. 
nice. Okay, let's correct the username and let's go and write the second method. I'm going to create a method called query which will take two arguments. The first argument will hold the SQL query string and the second argument the binding values initialized as an empty array. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we are going to use prepared statements to interact with the database. If the binding values is confusing you, let me show you an example on how to use prepared statements in PDO. Let's go again to the script.php file and let's store the return PDO object in a variable named PDO. In the following example, I'm going to insert a user in the database with a normal query, not a prepared one. I'm going to construct the insert query the standard way that we do. I will say insert into users. I have a user tables in the database. I will show it to you when I'm done here with the query. Next, inside parentheses, I will enter the tables columns, the username, password and email. Next, I'm going to enter the values inside single quotes, which are the username, password and email variables. This is how we write a standard insert query. Now, let me show you the users table in the test database. We have a username, a password and an email column where we insert the corresponding values. To execute the query using PDO, I'm going to take the PDO variable and call the exec method. And as an argument, I will pass in the SQL query. And that's it. Now let's go and run the code in the browser. Don't worry about the error message. It's a test that I made earlier and forgot to clear the page. Okay, let's reload the page. Now check in the users table, we will see that the user is added in the database. Great. Now let's see how to insert the user in the database using a prepared statement. In a prepared statement, we don't use, we don't enter the values directly in the query. Instead, we are using question marks for each value. Those question marks are called positional placeholders. I'm going to change the exact method to execute and remove the SQL query. Next, I will use the PDO connection and call the prepare method. And I will pass in as an argument the SQL query string. Next, I'm going to bind the username, password and email with a question marks. I will call the bind param method and as its first argument, I will enter the number one. And as its, its second argument, the username. This will bind the first question mark with a username. Makes sense, right? Next, I'm going to bind the second question mark with a password and the third question mark with an email. Also, I will change the PDO to the query variable, which I forgot to do earlier. Also, let's wrap the, uh, the execute method in an if statement, so we will have a success message when everything works as supposed to. All right, let's run the code again. Okay, here is the success message. Let's check also the users table. And here we have the second record. Nice. This is how we use prepare statements with PDO. But this specific code isn't reusable for our database class because it's written explicitly for the users table. To make the code more generic, I need to refactor it. Here is how. First, I'll create an array named binding values and insert the user's details into it. Next, I'll remove the bind param calls entirely. Finally, I'll pass the binding values array as an argument to the execute method. And that's it. Just three lines of code to execute a prepared statement. Let's test it out one more time by changing the username and email. Reloading the page. And here we have user George added to the database. Now let's go back to the database class and write the query method. I'll use again a try block. First, I'll connect to the database, then I'll prepare the SQL query. After that, I call the execute method, passing the binding values array as its argument. Next, I'll empty the query variable and close the database connection. Although this step isn't strictly necessary, since PHP automatically closes the connection when the script finishes running, it's good practice to manage resources explicitly. I will also use the affected rows property to store the result of the row count method. This will give us the number of rows affected by the query, whether it's an insert, update or delete operation. For error handling, I'll copy the catch block from the connect method, paste it here 
and update the error message to reflect the context of the query method. Now let's run some tests in the script.php file. I will call the query method passing in two arguments, the SQL query string and the binding values array. Let's run the script. Since there, there is no error on the screen, let's check the database. And here we have Peter in the user's table. Now let's go back and run an update query. I'll update Peter's username to Alex, where the email is peter at mail.com. Let's run the script again. And nice. The update query worked perfectly. Finally, let's test a delete query. I'll delete Alex from the user's table. Once again, let's run the code. Reloading PHP my admin. We can see that Alex is no longer in the table. Great. With a query method, we can now perform insert, update, and delete operations on any database table using just a single function. How cool is that? Now we'll go back to the database class and write one more method to select data from the database. I will name the method select and again I will pass the SQL query string and the binding values as arguments. The pattern stays the same. Again, I will use a try catch block, connect to the database, prepare the query, execute the query, Use the fetch all method to fetch the rows from the database as an associative array. Close the con database connection and return the result set that is stored in the data variable. Let's copy and paste the catch block and change the error message. And I forgot to set the binding values to an empty array. OK. Now let's run a test on the select method. I will select everything from the user's table where the username is George. Let's change the query method to select and store the return data in a data in the data variable. I will use the var export function to display the data on the screen. Okay, let's run the code one more time. And we see the user with username with the username of George on the screen on the screen. Great. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that we can also write the query string without placeholders and binding values. The code will work just fine. Let me show you. Let's select everything from the users table and also remove the binding values from the select method. Let's run the code a last time. And we see all the records from the users table on the screen. Great. And that's it. Guys, I have a video for you to watch on how to dynamically populate select menu with data from a database. Check it out. You will learn basic PHP and JavaScript stuff that you have to know. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like. See you in the next one.